we're doing a series called A Reflection of Ladies Used by God. A Reflection of Ladies Used by God. And this morning, we'll be examining the character of Abigail. The character of Abigail. A woman who changed her life and all the people who were associated with her. Now, you just can't tell the story of Abigail without reading the scripture, which is why there's a, a 38 verses this morning, and um, we're going to have um, Danelle Dimitri read the scripture in just a moment. But you have to understand what was going on. You have to get just a little bit of a background. I know, I'm not, I, I know there are people like myself who love history. I, I can talk an hour on all that was going on before I even preach this, but I can't do that. But I have to give you just a little bit of what was happening in the world then for this story to take place, okay? So this is what was happening. After David killed Goliath, Saul brought him into his house in 1 Samuel 18. David excelled in everything Saul gave him to do. King Saul became very jealous of David and his popularity because of all of his various military campaigns. If you continue to read in the scriptures, they were singing songs. Saul has killed his thousands, and David has killed his tens of thousands. And so the people started to love David more than Saul. There were 15 judges who ruled uh, Jerusalem, uh, who ruled Israel. Some of the notable judges, again, this is all taking place at the same time, some of the notable judges were Joel, Deborah, Gideon, Tola, Samson, and Samuel, who just died. Samuel just passed. The opening scene here in 1 Samuel 25, verse 1, Samuel, the last of the judges of Israel, has died, and all of Israel is in mourning and in the wilderness of Paran. P-A-R-A-N. So now, all of Israel is mourning, mourning the, the great judge, the great leader, Samuel, has passed, okay? David was on the run from Saul. Remember, Saul got jealous of David. David took his possessions and his family and started to run. Saul was pursuing him. All this was happening at the same time. In today's passage about an ordinary woman under difficult cir circumstances, married to an alcoholic husband, which meant she oversaw in running the family business due to the lack of social skills of her husband. You may be thinking I'm talking about a 20th century woman, but I'm talking about a woman named Abigail. The more I read and the more I've grown to admire Abigail, her character, wisdom, and devotion she displays to her drunken husband Nabal, whose name literally means, Nabal's name literally means fool or foolish man, okay? That his name actually means how he behaved. By story's end, she became the wife of King David and mother to their son Daniel. So there you have it. So now, could you please welcome Danelle Dimitri up, and she's going to read the text. And she's going to read 1 Samuel 25, verses 2 to 40. Come on up, my sister. First Samuel 25, 2 through 40. And there was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel, and the man was very great. And he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. And David sent out 10 young men and David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. 
and thus shall ye say to him that liveth in prosperity, Peace be both to thee, and peace to be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shearers. Now thy shepherds which were with us, we hurt them not, neither was there aught missing unto them, all the while they were in Carmel. Ask the young men, and they will show thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes. For we come in a good day, give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thine hand unto thy servants and to thy son David. And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David and ceased. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David and who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shearers and give it unto the men whom I know not whence they be? So David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all those sayings. And David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword, and there went up after David about four hundred men, and two hundred abode by the stuff. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything, as long as we were conservate, con conversant with them when we were in the fields. They were, all, they were a wall unto us both by night and day, and, and all, all the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took two hundred loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and a hundred clusters of raisin and two hundred cakes of figs and laid them on the asses. And she said unto her servant, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. And it was so, as she rode on the ass, that she came down by the covert of the hill, and behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertaineth unto him, and he hath requited me evil for good. So the more all do God unto the enemies of David, if I leave all of all that pertaineth to him by the morning light, any that pisseth against the wall. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me let this iniquity be, and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience and hear the words of thine handmaid. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as my soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies, and they that seek evil to my Lord, be as Nabal. And now this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord. And evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. Yet a man is risen up, risen to pursue thee, and to seek thy soul. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God. 
and the souls of thine enemies, them shall he sling out, <clears throat> excuse me, as out of the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he hath spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of heart unto my Lord, neither that thou hast shed blood causelessly, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me, and blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood, and from avenging myself with mine own hand. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou had hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left any unto Nabal by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry with him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing less or more until the morning light. But it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. And it came to pass about ten days after that the Lord smote Nabal, that he died. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord that hath pleaded the cause of mine reproach from the hand of Nabal, and hath kept his servant from evil. For the Lord hath returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and communed with Abigail to take her to him to wife. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail, to Carmel, they spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. Outstanding. Thank you. You see, some scriptures you just can't dive in the middle and say, this is what happened. You have to read the text. So, now you know the story and what happened. So where are we going? Don't tell me that man's going to break down 48 verses. No, we're going to make it a little bit easier. What I admire about Abigail, in your bulletin, you will find an acrostics. What I admire about Abigail, the A is for accountable. I'm going to give you what they, what they are, and then we're going to go through them. A is for accountable. B is for boldness. I is for intelligence. G is for gentleness. A is for attentive. I is for integrity. The second I in Abigail is for integrity. And the L is for loving kindness. That's, these are the things that I really admired about Abigail. A woman, a lady that God used. Okay, Heavenly Father, as we open the scriptures for the next few minutes, may you so reign, Heavenly Father. May the hearers of the word, Lord God, may the word penetrate their souls through the Holy Spirit. May none of us leave here the same as we walked in, because we heard from you this morning, through the preached word, through the singing, through the praying, Lord. Help us, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So A is for accountable. Accountable. Did I give you that? Yes. A is for accountable. I just want to make sure I did that. And that comes from verses 14 through 17. Verses 14 through 17. One of the servants told Nabal's wife, Abigail, David sent messages from the desert to give our master for his greeting, but he hurled insults at them. Yet these men were very good to us. They did not m mistreat us, and the, the whole time we were out in the fields near them, nothing was missing. Night and day, 
They were a wall around us all the time we were herding our sheep near them. Now think it over and see what you can do, because disaster is hanging over our master and his household. He is such a wicked man that no one can talk to him. So the servants went and they told Abigail. Abigail took accountability for her husband. She took accountability for her husband. So what did she do? Abigail immediately took accountability for her husband, Nabal's wickedness and unwillingness to seek the counsel of others. James chapter 3, verse 17 says this, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is for, first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. That was exactly who, Na, uh, who Abigail was. That, that's like a definition of her heart. Nabal is the classic example of a person who puts their possessions in the place of their character. Nabal puts his possessions in the place of his character. Think about that for a minute. Let that sink in for a moment. Character and heart must be considered before possessions. Check out the warning Jesus gives us in Luke. Jesus talks about that. Here's what he says in Luke. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Abigail's willingness to take accountability for her husband, for her husband's foolishness, is a window into a God or Christ-centered heart. It's a little window. We get to peek a little bit, and it shows and shares a lot about the character of Abigail. B is for boldness. Boldness. That comes from verses 18 and 19. Abigail lost no time. She took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five dressed sheep, five seeds of grain, of roasted grain, a hundred cake of raisin, and 200 cakes of pressed figs, and loaded them on a donkey. Then she told her servants, go on ahead, I'll follow you, but she did not tell her husband, <coughs> excuse me, Nepal. I have a quote here from one of the men that I admire. Now, you, you're going to get a lot of guys that I read and guys that I admire. You got one this morning from Al Alistair Be uh, Be uh, Begg. Here's another one, John MacArthur. John MacArthur's my boy, okay? I, I, the, the guy is just unbelievable. If you want to learn theology and, and God's word, John MacArthur is one of the best in the country. Here's what he said about these verses. Abigail knew that Nabal would disagree with her actions, but knowing the Lord's choice of David, verse 25, she recognizes the consequences involved in Nabal's, in Nabal's cursing of David. By her actions, she chose to, to obey God rather than man. She chose to obey God rather than man. There are going to be times in all of our lives where the right thing to do is the right thing to do. Society is going to want you to take another way or make it easier or family pressure or peer pressure if you're in school or college and everybody's doing it. There are times in all of our lives where doing right is the only and right course for those of us that love Jesus Christ. We can't think about the consequences. We can't think about what may or may not happen. If we stand on righteousness, don't we know who holds our future? Don't we? Isn't, isn't your life secured in Jesus Christ? The scripture says that it is. The scripture tells us that if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that the Holy Spirit seals you you can't lose your salvation. So there are going to be times in life, just like with Abigail, where doing right is doing right. You heard what she loaded up. By the way, when you, when you do a deeper dive into the text, um, into a deeper dive, that's... Grab some commentaries and... and 
some other things, and they tell you exactly what she took, okay? One of the things that really stuck out to me, I'm going to share with you. Five sheep per hundred men. She took five sheep per hundred men. There were about 600 men with David, okay? About 600 men with David. Clusters of raisins. So it's just, the, in, the list is true, but one of the things that stuck out with me as I was studying this text was she literally took five sheep for every hundred men. So it wasn't just a couple of sheep. When you read it, you think, oh, just a couple. He has 600 men with him. Remember, 400 came with him to destroy Nabal, and 200 stayed back with the supplies. Okay? Now that's just the men. We're not talking about their wives and children or anything. All, the, all these provisions were a matter of little worth to Nabal. Nabal would have not even noticed those things were missing. That's how rich of a man he was. That's how rich he was. He would have got up from his drunken stupor and looked out, and he would not have noticed 40 sheep missing. He wouldn't have noticed it because he was that rich. The eye is for intelligence, and that comes from verses 28 to 31. Please forgive your servant's offense, for the Lord will certainly make a lasting dynasty for my master because he fights the Lord's battles. Let no wrongdoing be found in you as long as you live. Now, this, is, this is Abigail's encounter with David, okay? So as she's talking to him, and he's listening to her, and he's admiring what is happening here, Abigail was well aware of the stories of King David and his battle victories against the Philistines, in which David sought. And one of the things that impressed Abigail, and when you read about David, and maybe there'll be a series down the line. But when you read about David, when he was fighting, his very first fight with a man was against Goliath. Because remember, he fought bears and all that stuff. But if you, re if you go back and read the text of David, David and Goliath, you will read very clearly that this is the Lord's battle. David did everything for his God. He didn't do anything for his glory. And Abigail knew this. David sought to glorify God rather than himself in all of the battles that he fought. Proverbs 18.15 describes what I believe some of Abigail's heart. Proverbs 18.15 says, The heart of the discerning requires knowledge. The ears of the wise seek it out. The heart, the wisdom, requires knowledge. You've got to know about stuff. Let's go on. The G is for gentleness. The G is for gentleness. Now, when I was looking at this, and I was trying to come up with a word that begins with the G, one of the first things on my mind, I'm going to put it out there, which one of you women would have acted this way with Abigail the next day with her husband? Which one of you women would have acted with the same grace that she did? I just want to put that out there. Because I know, I don't know, my cakes may have wanted to reach out and touch somebody. I don't know. I put that question to all you married ladies out there. Here's what the verse says. It's 1 Samuel 25, 36 to 37. When Abigail went to Nabal, he was in the house holding a banquet like that of a king. He was in high spirits and very drunk. So she took, she told him nothing until daybreak. First off, how many of you would have been in his face? Do you understand what just happened and what I just did? Do you know we almost lost everything? Everybody almost died. David was here with 400 men to kill us all. You drunken, and you went blankety blankety blank. But not Abigail. She chose to say nothing. Then in the morning, when Nabal was sober, his wife told him all these things. I love this scene. And his heart failed him, and he became like stone. He became like stone. 
There's a couple of Bible verses that I wanted to give to you about this, about the, the character and the heart of Abigail that I believe are appropriate for this little scene. Philippians 5.4 Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is nearby. Even in the morning, she was gentle to her husband. Internally, she's human. She wanted to kill the man. I mean, come on. That would be like the president knocking on your door. Something happened to all their cars, and your house is the only one that they can go to. And the president and his entourage knocks on your door at 3 o'clock in the morning, and he goes, hi, I'm the president of the United States. It's President Biden. Could you please let us in? No! I didn't vote for you. Can you imagine? Here's another verse. Proverbs 25, 15. Through patience, a ruler can be persuaded, and a gentle tongue can break a bone. A gentle tongue can break a bone. Proverbs 15, verses 1 and 2. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise commands knowledge. The tongue of the wise commands knowledge, but the mouth of the fool gushes folly. Nabal, his name means fool. The A is attentive. That comes from 1 Samuel 25, verses 14 to 16. One of the servants told Nabal's, Nabal's wife, Abigail, David sent messages. So the servant told, told Abigail what these men did for them when they were out in the wilderness with their flocks and herds and no protection. And David's men watched over them the robbers and the thieves that, that prey on small farmers or prey on people without protection was huge. And David's men protected them. And they didn't ask for anything. And so they went and they said, Abigail, I don't know what's wrong with Nabal, but if it wasn't for David's men, we wouldn't even be here. And neither would our herds. That's me ad libbing. I want you to notice, Abigail listened intently to the whole situation. She listened intently, okay? Now, she already knew she's married to an alcoholic, mean man. She already knows that. But she listened. So what do we get from her listening? Abigail had trust in her servants. Her servants trusted Abigail to go to her and tell her what was up. So that means Abigail had a, has a good relationship with all of their servants because they came to her in trust. And she did something about it. Abigail had complete understanding that David and his men protected her husband's business because the people who told her, the servant who told her, they had a relationship, they trusted each other. Abigail listened to people. So Abigail wasn't just this way in this story with her husband. This was how Abigail lived. This is who she was. The servants knew Abigail, the servants knew Nabal was a wicked drunk who mistreated everyone, including them. So everyone around Nabal know what kind of a man he was. The picture that comes to mind about Abigail and her actions, I believe, is part of Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 to 6. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 to 6. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commandments within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, and if you call out for insight and cry out loud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom and form, wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Abigail had trust, knowledge, and understanding of what was happening, and she reacted. It 
it is evident that David had a claim upon Nabal. David had every right to take him out. He had every right to take him out for what his, his men did. Not only did his men not hurt Nabal's people, but they also didn't touch their flocks or supplies. The eye is for integrity. The eye is for integrity. That comes from verses 32 to 35. David said to Abigail, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you today to meet me. May you be blessed for your good judgment and for keeping me from bloodshed this day and from avenging myself with my own hand. Otherwise, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, who has kept me from harming you, if you had not come quickly to meet me, not one male belonging to Nabal would have been left alive by daybreak. Then David accepted from her hand what she brought him and said, Go home in peace. I have heard your words and grant your, granted your request. Mm, mm, mm. You want to talk about integrity? In this story, David had integrity just as much as Abigail. Now notice I said in this story, right? Because we all know David's great sin. That's a whole nother sermon. But the integrity of Abigail to stand firm. Now, I, mean, I mean, think about this, guys, okay? Uh, we're looking at a culture where women weren't really equal at all. Women were just for babies and whatever. They weren't really that the way everything is today. Although we still got issues in that area, it wasn't as, as it was that day. You have this woman who has a drunken fool for her husband who takes all of this cattle and all of this stuff and has her servants loaded on donkeys and it's all gone before her and then she gets down and bows down to the ground to the oncoming king and then stands up and says what she said in the earlier verses. Because she was standing on righteousness, people. Don't miss that. She was standing on righteousness. She was doing the right thing. And when you're doing the right thing, no matter how nervous you are, your legs could be shaken as you're talking. It doesn't matter. When you're doing the right thing and you know that this is what God wants you to do, you stand firm. And that's exactly what girlfriend did. Her integrity in this issue was phenomenal. Proverbs 11.3 says, The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 21 says this, For we are, taking, we are taking pains to do what is right, not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of man. We as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ need to take painstaking, we need to make sure that when we have things to do, especially in the public, that we are in righteousness. We do not want to stand in error. The L is for loving kindness. The L is for loving kindness. And this is another one of those where the loving kindness is a two-way street. David's loving kindness and Abigail's loving kindness. David's loving kindness to Abigail. Abigail's loving kindness to her husband and what she did. That was stone cold love. Okay? She put how she felt about him. She put all of that behind her. She put the righteousness of what to do in front of her. And this is my husband. I'm embarrassed at his decisions. He's a drunk. He's a fool. But this is my husband. When David, and this comes from verses 39 and 40, 39 and 40, when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Praise be to the Lord 
who has upheld my cause against Nepal for treating me with contempt. He has kept his servant from doing wrong and has brought Nepal's wrongdoing down on his head. Let me stop right there real quick. Guys, there are times in our lives when people do wrong to us and we want to reach out and we want to touch somebody. We want to reach out and we want to touch somebody. And touch them around the neck. Because it's, it's emotional for us when people lie about us or sin against us or take something from us or, God forbid, hurt one of my kids. Hurt one of my grandchildren. We, we want to just go crazy. But we can't. We must show holy restraint. We must show holy restraint. You know why? Because he who lives in us is stronger than he who lives in the world. And we have to understand that the Lord knows that one of his children was hurt wrongly. And the Lord is going to deal with the hurt. He's going to deal with that person. Here's the problem we have as believers. Sometimes we're not going to see him deal with them. Because deep down inside, we want to see them get theirs, don't we? We want to see them get theirs. Let me tell you a quick story. I, I, I have to tell you the story. So, I was working for a major retailer, and I was opening stores around the country. And as I was um, working in a couple of stores, I came across a young man that actually was under me. He was one of my managers, and I was training him and everything else. But this young man did not want to work hard. This young man wanted to cut all the corners, go way past my level, and keep on going. And he did. He used people in the store. He did a lot of wrong that was covered up. He did a whole lot of things. I transferred him to another store, thinking I need to not even deal with him. I transferred him to another store. A year and a half later, a year and a half later, we're doing a company meeting across all 500 stores. And this particular company was one of the first companies in the nation to do uh, conference calling on the computer and on the TV. So all of our stores had a huge conference room. And so all of us, all my managers and myself, were in, gathered for this conference call, this conference video from Minneapolis. The name of the company was Target. I work for Target, opening stores around the country. And so we're all sitting there. And from Minneapolis steps this man of very poor character, had done everything wrong, and now he's like a regional guy. And I'm sitting there with all of my leaders. Half of them knew that I knew him. Let me tell you how the Lord blessed me. First, I didn't turn red with anger because I'm a black man. So they couldn't see me seething internally because I was hot. I was hot. The second thing is I kept saying, okay, Lord, I, I, I kept memorizing the scripture. No temptation shall seize you except what is common to man. But God is faithful. Do not be, be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, we provide, provide a way out for you. And I started calming down, and we went to the meeting. That night, I went to the men's Bible study. And I put it on the table with the brothers. And one of the brothers came up to me and he goes, back then I'm known as Smitty. Smitty, I understand how you feel, but God's going to take care of him. Yeah, you don't get it, man. I'm saying, you don't get it. You don't understand it. He's like, Larry, the Lord's going to deal with him. And this is what I believe. When the Lord deals with people like that, he always deals with them at the very worst time in their life that could happen to be dealing with. Now, this is no exaggeration. This is, this is a true story. Three weeks later, we get an emergency call from home office. 
All managers, please go to the conference room. On the emergency call, they put a picture of his face up. He has been arrested on, church, on store, prop, uh, store property. Do not deal with him. The authorities are dealing with him. He was arrested on Saturday morning. If you have any questions, talk to your district managers. That's all we have to say, and they turn the TV off. But you know what happens. You start calling folks. What happened? Well, he was stealing from the company. He had gotten several women pregnant in the stores along the way. And because of what he did to the company, they arrested him on Saturday morning. You know what was happening Saturday morning? He was in his tux getting ready to walk down the aisle. They arrested him on his wedding day. Of course, three days later, I went to the men's Bible study and went, dudes, God really does take care of the stuff. Our problem is we want the microwave deal. We want that person that we're mad at dealt with immediately. And we want them to feel the pain that we feel right now. And that's not how God works. What we have to do when we get angry and mad at other people for hurting us, hurting our family, or doing something that is egregious in our life to us, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll make your path straight. We have to trust in the Lord. He knows the pain of your heart. He knows what happened to you. Let him deal with it. Because he's going to. He's going to. You may or may not find out how. And many times you will not find out how. But you trust in the Lord. Okay? As Christians, as born-again believers, we trust in him and the person of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit dwelling in us, he fights our battles. There are all going to be times to stand up, like Abigail. There are. So loving kindness. Abigail's loving kindness to David and his men led David to take Abigail as his wife when Nabal died. Now, we all know David had other wives. That's a whole other sermon. But when you finish the text, Abigail and David had a baby, and they named him Daniel. Here's your walking away thought this morning. Please rise. Here's your walking away thought. Accountability boldness, intelligence, gentleness, attentiveness, and integrity, and loving kindness are the, are the foundational bedrock of a Christ-centered heart and the purpose which spills over to every aspect of your life. A Christ-filled heart should spill over to every aspect of your life, from shopping at, at um, Market Basket to cutting your grass. It should spill over as to who we are. Abigail is an example of a woman of high character that the Lord would build in every single Christian. The, the Lord Jesus Christ wants all of us, he wants all of us, he wants to build in us what he built in Abigail. Every single Christian, he wants us to be that way. Here's the issue. The issue is we're all different. We all got stuff. We all got things we need to take to the cross and leave it. We all got things that we have to learn from Scripture and grow us. The ultimate is that no Christian is going to make it until we see his face. We are all under construction. Every single Christian is under construction. You will never start refining who you are in Christ. You're never going to be that guy or that woman, and now I've made it. All of us are under construction. Some of us are uh, further along the path than others. So what? All of us are under construction. The Bible is very clear in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit, remember, 
If Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you have the fruit of the Spirit in you. As a Christian, you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit already in you. So what you need to become the man or the woman that God wants you to be is already in you. Your part is to build on it through reading God's Word, through growing in your faith, through coming to church, through utilizing how he wired you to ask others to come to church with you, through raising your children, through the relationships of your friends and family. But every single believer has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and the fruit of the Spirit is in every single believer. So that means, by definition, Galatians 5 is possible for every single believer. Don't you love that? That just gets me excited. It gets me excited. So what does Galatians 5, 22, 23 says? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I struggle with that one. I ain't going to lie to you. Many on here I am still just like taking baby steps at. Self-control. Against such things there is no law. Isn't that cool? We all have the opportunity to grow in our faith and to be that man or the woman right now in today's world. We have another example of that is Queen, with Queen Elizabeth. Very elegant and graceful. For 70 years! Living in the public eye. It's incredible. But every believer has the opportunity to have that happen. Abigail changed the life of all her servants in Nabal's household. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for the character of Abigail. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for what she showed us through the word this morning. I pray, Heavenly Father, that all of us not leave here the same, that we all grab a piece of something from the character of, Na of, of Abigail, and that we start to really ask you, Lord God, to convert that into our own lives, Lord. There are areas in each one of our lives that need help, because we all need help. So, Heavenly Father, help us to identify some areas and give them to you and grow in you, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to be with your people this morning. If there are some here who don't know you as their Lord and Savior, may they not leave here this morning before they understand that they too can have a personal relationship with the most holy God, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the saints. In Jesus' name, amen.